the blizzard um, <laughs> and, uh, and the aftermath of that. Um, it's nice. I have neighbors on all three sides that have snow blowers, and they just love getting them out when they have snowstorms. So I'm out there with bottles of wine, kind of uh, <laughs> thanking them. Um, so we uh, have, a, have a great agenda today. Uh, I'd like to start out by uh, announcing that we have uh, unanimously approved uh, two new members to our board, the WCTA board, Jenny O'Neill and Lauren Richardson, and, and we welcome them to the WCCA board and they'll, they'll be uh, joining us at our next board meeting. We have a, a, a board meeting on the, the Tuesday, the week before the second Tuesday of the month um, where we go through and plan the agenda for these monthly meetings and talk about other issues, review our finances, our membership roster. We're always, we're always on the hunt for more members. So uh, invite people to these meetings as you think about it. Um, we, we talked just a little bit, a, a couple of people um, indicated that they, they didn't receive the, uh, the, the newsletter that uh, went out Monday. So uh, if you didn't get that, uh, send an email to info at westcolfax.org and, and Katie will send you a, a, a new one and you can click on. And, and what she was also indicating is that when you get it, click on one of the links and interact with it a little bit because it'll that might help keep it out of your, your junk folder if that's happening. So just a, just a little tip there. Um, so welcome everyone. Uh, let's uh, get right at it. And uh, I know we have, I know Leslie is with us this morning. So maybe we'll start with her uh, in terms of the um, state and county elected officials and then see who else we have with us. Well, good morning, everyone. It's great to see you. Andy's actually going to kick us off. You, okay. We have all three Jeffco commissioners here today. Oh, so uh, Andy's going to share the update for this morning. Okay, great. thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. Great. Good morning, everyone. I'm Andy Kerr, one of your three Jefferson County Commissioners, all three of which are joining you today. And Tracy Kreffler is going to talk a little bit about vaccines in uh, just a minute. I um, mostly wanted to give everyone uh, an update. Happy St. Patrick's Day. It's hard to tell in, um, in, <laughs> in the, this little screen there, but this is a predominantly green shirt. Uh, the one I wanted to wear, I think I sent to the cleaners, uh, which, and I'm glad my cleaners is still open after a year of very few shirts needing to be cleaned. My cleaner is still open, so I'm happy about that. But that's where my really green shirt is right now. So that was uh, poor planning on, on, on my part, but happy St. Patrick's Day, everyone. Um, as, as was mentioned, uh, this is about the one year anniversary of uh, COVID and many of the, the, um, many of the, the things that now we're taking for granted uh, starting to happen, uh, kids uh, learning remotely and uh, businesses either shutting down or having to go into uh, quarantine mode. And um, we, we are seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, different, uh, I know different people have said it different ways, the light at the end of the tunnel, where if we're trying to score a touchdown, we're at the 10 yard line and we're, and we're running hard, but uh, we're not quite there yet. And so I just wanted to, to make sure everyone knew uh, where we are. Uh, right now, Jefferson County as a whole has been pretty steady the last two and a half, three weeks. Uh, one of the, the major metrics that we look at is uh, incidence rate per 100,000. And we've been right around the 100, uh, 100 people per 100,000 mark for uh, going close to three weeks now. We had actually dropped down after that really, really high peak um, over uh, November, December, and into January. Uh, steady declines all the way up until about three weeks ago. And we had dropped down and on the, the dial, uh, the, the in, infamous dial, which has been adjusted several times, we actually dropped down into blue uh, just barely. And then we came up just a little bit. And so we're, we're right at that line between blue and, and yellow, uh, especially around the incidence rate, which I said is right around 100 per 100,000. Um, the state with their, with their new dial 3.0 has given a 15% variance. So even, even if we go a little bit above um, that line of, a, of 100 per 100,000, uh, the state is going to allow us to stay in the blue part of the, the dial 
uh, for the time being. But it is it is a plateau uh, statewide. In fact, uh, this morning they um, the news is is that hospitalizations have actually increased the last couple of days uh, statewide in Colorado. So, just some some um, concerns out there that. We're not quite there yet. It's it's not time uh, to be that that football player who's running for the end zone and turns around and starts dancing or flipping the ball in the air or anything. Um, let's get across that goal line and uh, make sure that everyone is still doing the social distancing, uh, wearing the mask uh, when you can't social distance, and uh, just. Um, making sure you're, you're testing if you're not feeling well, stay home if you're not feeling well, feeling well, and um, getting your vaccine. And so with that, let me turn it over to um, uh, Commissioner Tracy Crafter. Thank you, good morning, everybody. So how many people have gotten their vaccines? Raise your hand. Yay, so my husband and I got ours yesterday and look it, I'm all right. I'm up this morning and I'm working and feeling good. Um, so the vaccine program is going extremely well. Uh, we now, as you know, have three vaccines that we have to choose from. And starting next week, we should really get a good number of those vaccines in so that um, it should not be a problem being able to sign up and to be able to get in. The president, you know, has said everyone eligible will be eligible by May 1st. The governor has said everyone will be eligible by mid-April. Um, so we've uh, done just about all of the 70 and above. Um, and so finishing up uh, everybody 70 and above, really working on the 65 and older, we're about 30, 40%. We'll get an update this after, um, today at 11 o'clock. Um, and then 50 and above start can be eligible starting on Friday. So get ready. Um, I think, I, I'm sure I had something else, but must be the vaccine that is causing memory problems. <laughs> so get your vaccines, don't spike the ball at the five yard line. I think that's what Andy was meaning to say. Thank you, Tracy. Thanks everybody. Thank you. Leslie, do you have anything to add? I think uh, Andy and Tracy did a great job with updates regarding the vaccine. Um, I'll just mention briefly, the county is also working on a strategic plan um, to really take a closer look at, at uh, what we're doing in terms of county services and programs. We're going to be asking our community to join us and weigh in. So we'll be sure to share more information with you on that. Uh, if you'd like to weigh in as well, we'd really love to hear your opinion. Budget uh, season is starting to come up as well. So we'll be looking at those issues, uh, but I think Andy and Tracy did a, a great job. Two other just quick notes on those fronts though. Thanks so much, everyone. Thank you. We're really appreciative that all three of you make the time to be with us today. That's that's, that's very nice. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I agree, Tracy, don't spike, spike the ball at the five yard line. That's a great way to put it. Um, it, it do we have any other uh, state elected officials with us today that would like to chime in this morning? Um, how about uh, Lakewood City Council? Anyone from City Council? Yes, I'm here, but I noticed that the mayor was on, so I'll defer to him. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor, are you with us this, this morning? Ron, how are you, sir? Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's fabulous to be with you. Um, I want to give a shout out to our public works team and our police department, as well as West Metro Fire. Uh, a blizzard that uh, doesn't come very often. And I think they did an incredible job, even though um, sometimes the plows don't get there fast enough. We didn't really receive a lot of plow complaints. I, I received a couple, which is normal, but I think people were pretty understanding. And I think they made it through the whole city within the first 24 hours. Certainly my street rarely, rarely gets plowed. And uh, when you're shoveling your neighbors out and they say, aren't there any perks living next to the mayor? I say, not really. <laughs> they just kind of fall in line and wait for the plows to come, but it's pretty cool. So I want to uh, thank them. And a um, lot of action going on. Uh, most watched was the Westland Town Center transfer, which did uh, finalize on Monday night with a affirmative vote by city council. Uh, certainly a, a lot of information surrounding it. 
and uh, challenging situation, but now starts a new beginning, I think, for the community and the city and the property owner to, to really look at a vision for, for new things there and also put some money back into that area uh, through that transfer. So um, while there were a lot of ancillary things, I think council really just had to look at the legal aspects of a contract and a condemnation that was started in 1992. And uh, it's easy to say, certainly we wouldn't do that now, but back then I, th I think it was in a similar situation where it was uh, dying and decaying. The city did uh, put in through the condemnation and through negotiations, $5 million throughout the lifespan that's yielded 37 million back into the community. And so I really encourage all those involved as, as well as RCG who I've been in contact with yesterday, their representative to really get back to the table and uh, get engaged and figure out how we can uh, move that forward. Also of great news for this area is the grant approval, the 12.5 million for Teller to Sheridan. So that is just incredible. And, and I did mention this, there's a lot of, lot of investment, public and private still continuing on West Colfax and a lot of interest when you add in the stormwater. So coming up, two quasi-judicial uh, hearings for council. Uh, so we won't really be able to engage on these, but we have a blight designation over near Mount Air Park on Monday night. And then we also have prestige Porsche um, uh, rezoning. So love to have the community engaged. Hotel motel hearings. I think there's one this afternoon and maybe Commander Perry can add. It looks like Councillor Vincent's telling me at 3 p.m. So the two motels, two of them today are of great challenge and of great interest. So if uh, you want more information, please reach out to, to one of us and we can get you that. We're waiting on a homeless update. Um, homeless meaning that we've really tried to coalesce around a countywide solution that works with all the cities in the county. And there's been a lot of research done and that report should be coming out this week. And, and maybe it has, but I have not seen it. And then I know um, former Councillor Cindy Barraway and former Commissioner Casey Ty are heading up a, a group that's really looking at next steps with public-private uh, partnerships for sheltering or, or kind of the new phase of sheltering, something along those lines. So stay tuned there. I want to give a shout out to Jenny and Neil. While council has to vote on her approval, she has been nominated for the Planning Commission, which I think is incredible for the WCCA community. So we're excited about <laughs> that. And Sharon's excited for sure. I can hear her. Um, Thank you. Yes. Uh, Federal Center's back on back on sale. It's back on the sale block. So $15 million is uh, what I saw yesterday, a flyer for that 49 acre parcel. And uh, that's certainly of great interest. And I think um, throughout the years has had some ups and downs and, and going way back had an incredible plan that the city had put together with the GSA and, and unfortunately that unraveled. So hopefully we can see something come back to light. I think there's still a lot of interest there. And then legislatively, the jail population bill, I've continued to mention this. It's important that you reach out to your state legislators. It's uh, kind of slowed down a little bit, but basically it's to set some of the levels at populations that we've seen during COVID. And for many in our community, that's not acceptable. And it's been quite a challenge and there's a lot of different stories. So we wanna make sure the folks that need to be in jail can go to jail, those that don't need to, aren't, but it's a delicate balance and what's happening now is not working, uh, evidenced by the increase in crime. And it's really, really, I think a, a bill that doesn't protect victims of crime. And so I'm quite worried. I know the city is coming out and trying to amend it. And we're working with all the mayors as well as other elected officials to join in that. This is just something to put on your radar because it's really important and I don't think it's getting a lot of light, but the Regional Air Quality Council, the RAC, the metro area and the North Metro have been in non-compliance with air quality standards and continue to fall further out of compliance. And what that could trigger is plans for businesses over 200 to have to implement uh, protocols that don't allow for everybody to drive to work or how are you gonna find ways so not everybody's driving to work. And so there are some public hearings coming, but that's a big deal. And the non-containment continues to grow. 
And so um, I would just want to throw that out there for the community to start thinking about that and, and hearing about that. Rescue plan dollars are coming sometime. We don't really know our number. Some have said 18, some have said up to 22 million. So we'll start to look at that and see where those dollars go and what we do there. And last but not least, I have a coffee with the mayor, which I used to do live and those things ended about a year ago. So I'm gonna start doing this again and it's up to 20 people. And this first one will be in the morning, but I'll do evening and weekends cause I can do them virtually. And the reason why it's 20 is because it's really meant for a dialogue. It's not really town hall style. And once you get larger than that, it, it can be uh, hard to really have a good quality conversation. So I'm gonna post that in the chat. And with that, I'm done. And if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you, Mayor Paul. Um, maybe you, you might, if you know, uh, we were just talking that, that there's been uh, some press that Casa Bonita is uh, looking to reopen. Yeah, you know, we hear all the same things and read all the same things. So I, I'm getting my resume cleaned up for that cliff dive and that's all that I know. They haven't, uh, no, they haven't no, asked no, me no, yet no, to uh, no, submit. No, 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 no. That's why, that's why I mentioned it because I, you know, my 200 to your favorite charity is, is I'm, I'm kicking that into the bucket to get it started. So. All right. You're awesome. Cool. <laughs> yeah. No, there, there's a lot of talk and, and we don't, I mean, we don't have any, anything to update you with other than what others have said. And, I, I will say that I think it's an exciting time on West Colfax in many ways and and things that have taken a lot of years to start to come to fruition are finally. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for all that input. Uh, next we have Lakewood Economic Development. Is uh, Vanessa with us this morning? Yes, good morning, everyone. Good morning. How are you? Um, it's not the same when I don't get the you know feedback back, but a um, few updates for y'all today. Wanted to let you know that the Kolach factory reopened um, a little bit east of their former location. Um, so they opened at 8840 West Kipling. They're there, they're ready to serve you. Um, the jalapeno popper is my favorite. If you have never been there, a recommendation to try. Um, and Westfax is celebrating five years with us. So five years ago, they opened their doors. They are celebrating their anniversary the weekend of the 26th through the 28th. Um, so stop in, see them, say hello, say congrats. Five years is a fabulous mark. It's a mark a lot of businesses don't get to. So tell him thank you, tell him congrats and their whole team. Um, they are celebrating five years, so we're celebrating with them. Um, something I wanted to, to get some feedback on from y'all is we participate in a program called Colorado Companies to Watch. And we've um, brought it up here, I think every year, and it's a program that highlights essentially growing companies. So you're no longer a startup that's fighting to survive. You're in growth mode now. Um, and we nominate a lot of Lakewood businesses. Um, we work with a lot of our counterparts, you know, to make sure that Jeffco is well represented. But I'm gearing up to submit um, our, our nominations this year. The more the merrier. So if there's anyone that you think um, would fit and be a great nod, please send them my way. I'll put my info in the chat and I can add that to um, our nomination list. But um, we want to highlight them. We want to say thank you and show off all the hard work um, all of our businesses do. We we nominate anywhere and everywhere we can. Um, just currently coming up with Colorado Companies to Watch. So if you have any, please send them my way and we'll get those roped in as well. Um, and that was, those are the only really big updates I have. We still continue to work with all of our businesses uh, regarding just normal economic development work, but monitoring and walking themselves through COVID as well. Um, as you know, everyone had said, people are, are excited. We're not there yet, but continue to support our local businesses, continue to say hello to them. They are eager and happy to see you. Um, are there any specific questions I can help answer at the moment? Okay, um, I'll okay. put my info in the chat if that changes. Thank you, Vanessa. Thank you. Uh, next, we have 40 West Arts, and uh, I think uh, Liz Black is with us this morning. Hi, hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us again. And again, many congratulations to our new um, 
uh, Jenny, who's going to be serving on that commission and our new WCCA board members. How exciting to learn that wonderful new news. And I'll be quick. I think Alexis is going to speak in a, just a little bit about the art line and other updates there. So I just have a few quick things. Um, it's month of photography in the district. So many of our galleries are participating in this Metro Denver wide effort in celebration of the photographic arts. And for our first Friday, we had about 100 people out to 40 West Gallery alone and many people in the district all very safe. We had myself stationed at the door, making sure that everyone was in full compliance with all of the city and county COVID requirements. So just another great reminder that all of our galleries and spaces are really adhering to these requirements and keeping people safe. I highly encourage you to go check out the many, many photographic exhibits on display in the district. We are also continuing our wonderful partnership with Colorado Mills throughout 2021. We just had two new mini murals painted on site at Colorado Mills. Those are close to Burlington Coat Factory. So next time you're in the mills, we now have five mini murals over on display in that area. They're all gorgeous and around the theme of togetherness. We'll also have some new sculptural installations going into the mill shortly. And um, I wanted to let everyone know we're also kicking off an awesome benefit that's going to occur in May in partnership with all of our galleries, but specifically Edge Next and Pasternak Art Hub. The title of the gala or the benefit is Keep Kids Creating Art and 100% of the proceeds from art sales during that benefit will go to three local schools. Jefferson Junior Senior High School, Molholm Elementary, and Rose Stein Elementary. And the proceeds from that benefit will go to support art supplies for the teachers at those schools. So just keep an eye out for that. That'll be in May. And 40 West Arts is also serving on the advisory council for both Jefferson Junior Senior High School and Wheat Ridge High School as well. So lots of incredible partnership opportunities there and more to come. And that's all I have today. And like I said, Alexis, I think we'll be speaking more along the art line a little later. Oh, one more thing. We do have our Poet Laureate call coming out shortly. If we haven't mentioned that before, the Poet Laureate is a partnership between all three of our organizations, 40 West Arts, the West Colfax Community Association, and the Lakewood West Colfax Business Improvement District. This individual, once chosen, will receive a stipend, and in return, they're going to do a bunch of poems and um, other spoken word events, both virtual and in person, around the theme of West Colfax, the 10-year anniversary for 40 West Arts, and just the incredible history and culture along the West Colfax corridor. So stay tuned for that. That person will be selected relatively soon. Thank you. Thank you. I really look forward to getting information on the May Gala. That's a great opportunity to push some arts into the local schools. Uh, we've kind of been kind of beating that drum for a while. So we look forward to information on that. Uh, next, we have uh, the uh, Lakewood West Colfax bid and uh, Kevin Yoshida is uh, probably on deck for that. Uh, yeah, we're actually uh, going to do a deeper dive into the Vegas as part of the programming. So um, we can just keep moving around and I'll come back in a little bit. Okay, thank you, Kevin. Uh, next up, we have uh, West Metro Fire and uh, Cassie Turner is here this morning with us. Cassie. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm just filling in for Chief Rogers, who is on vacation again, lucky man. <laughs> um, wanted to let you know, obviously we had a big snow event. Um, the crews were out doing emergency service throughout that event, um, but the roads continue to be treacherous. So please slow down, watch for ice. Um, just because it looks clear, especially at night does not mean that you can go the posted speed limit. Um, last night we had a very serious rollover crash off of 285 near Wadsworth. Um, and the driver sustained some pretty serious injuries um, and had to be extricated from his car. So please um, just watch those roads and keep yourself safe. Um, 
It's also time to make sure that you are adopting your fire hydrant. So if there is a fire hydrant near you or on your property, um, it needs to be clear of snow three feet around that fire hydrant. So if there is a fire event, um, first responders can quickly access that. Um, and that is all I have, unless there's any questions. Thank Thanks you, everyone. Kathy. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. Thank you for everything you My do, pleasure. especially during these challenging weather times and, and beyond. Uh, next, we have Lakewood Police, and uh, I think Commander Perry is with us this morning. Yes, I am. Good morning. Thank you. Uh, the PD's been running as normal. We got through the snowstorm. Okay. Um, the only thing that I'll mention is the um, the motel licensing ordinance that was passed, uh, I think it's a little over a year ago. Uh, I think this is going to be very beneficial. Uh, the we did have a hearing on the Blue Sky Motel on February 10th. Uh, the Blue Sky is at 6205 West Colfax, and it's really been a thorn in our side. Over the last uh, several months, we've had two homicides there, recovered numerous stolen cars. We've had a lot of disturbances and assaults. And so they were brought before the, the hearing officer, and the hearing officers placed them on probation for the next year. Uh, as part of the requirements for their probation to keep their licenses that uh, they have to provide all guests to check in with a paper copy of the rules uh, and the check-in procedures. Uh, they have to establish a do not rent list, which uh, requires them to keep a record of people who've had problems there in the past. And if they try to rent rooms there, they'll be denied. Uh, they also are required to hire private security to be on site on Friday and Saturday nights at their own expense. And the management is required to enroll in a city approved hotel management course. And that has to be completed within the next 60 days. So uh, hopefully those, those things will uh, uh, result in less calls and try to clean that place up. But other than that, that's it from the police department. Same. Thank you for being with us today, Commander Perry, and thank you again for everything that Lakewood Police does in our community. Thank you. Uh, we will get into our program uh, now, and, and uh, we have Roger Wadnell, and I think uh, one or two of his uh, team members with us that uh, will present on the survey announcement for safer main streets and the, the grant uh, for the pedestrian project on, uh, on West Colfax. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, yeah, this is Roger Wadnell uh, with Lakewood Planning and also Matt Duncan with the Lakewood Transportation. There's Matt. Um, we'll be talking a little bit about the safety issue and then Ann Kuchenmeister, our uh, consultant with um, Michael Baker, will talk about what we really are kind of here for today is to kind of kick off the public involvement process with this project. We've been involved for quite some time, but um, given the fact that the mayor mentioned that the council approved the local match on Monday, which was a great step, you know, big step that, that we, we took, um, we're ready to really <clears throat> get people involved, <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, how, you, you know, how you can get involved in, and I won't, get it to Anne's presentation, but how you can get involved in shaping the project as well as being informed throughout the process. And we're looking at this organization as, again, as I mentioned last time, as a, as a conduit for information to the community. And I think it's, it's, a, it's a great opportunity. Um, you might hear a little bit of a repeat on some information, but there are people that, you know, come and go in, in different meetings. And, and we want to kind of be uh, consistent in, in getting the word out as much as we can. Uh, I mentioned council approval on Monday. Uh, some of the next steps will be with this new grant to get a consultant, consultant team on board to start working on the design. And we will start with a request for proposal, which will probably go out around the 1st of April, and then um, get someone on, get a team on board by um, early summer to start looking at the actual details of, of design. So you're not gonna be looking at construction for quite some time. 
So there's plenty of time to kind of talk about the project and, and really kind of fine tune things on how it will work. Um, with that, I'll just turn it over to Matt Duncan to talk a little bit about traffic and then and to Anne to um, talk about the public involvement piece. Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me back. I apologize. The, do the jokes aren't going to be any better the second time around. So <laughs> if you want to grab a coffee, go ahead. Um, like Roger said, this is a, a repeat, really, of what we talked about last month. I'm very excited, though, about, you know, the state, uh, you know, is putting 10 million into this project, the city, two and a half million. It is a wonderful investment in safety. Um, on the state level, um, as far as applications went, this scored the highest on cost benefit. So investment for dollar return. So very, very excited with the city leadership and moving forward with this. Um, like I mentioned last month, the city, um, by and large, we are have been successful in reducing crashes. Um, we are at 10-year lows. We've had three consecutive years of 10-year lows and crashes. Um, even Colfax, our crashes and our hospitalizations have gone down, but they're stubbornly high and very high, particularly along this segment of Colfax. And that's what we're you know, addressing with our project. Um, the example that kind of resonates with folks is I use the distance from Kipling to Wadsworth, which is equally distant from Wadsworth to Sheridan, which is this project. So on the other side of Wadsworth, we've had 429 crashes in a five-year period, which is very high. On this side of Wadsworth, on the east side of Wadsworth, close to Denver, that number is 820. Mm. And that works out to be about a crash every other day. 98 of those crashes involve folks that are on foot or on bike. Um, one in four of those crashes are folks that are in cars. They're simply trying to cross Colfax, you know, drive across it or turning left onto or off of Colfax. And those are also particularly alarming because broadside crashes such as that uh, put both the motorist and a passenger in the, the driver or the passenger compartment in, in danger. So, um, and, and it is those solutions that we presented to CDOT, um, which really resulted in the scoring so high um, with this project. Uh, the other thing that I mentioned is our, our constraint is the state doesn't really own anything behind the curb. We know we don't have sidewalks out there and we, we need land to put sidewalks on. Um, the other fact or the thing that we know is the land that the government does own today is not being efficiently used. Um, that third lane was put in before I-70 was put in place. Um, that right lane today is mostly used by, <clears throat> excuse me, by RTD for their buses, um, folks turning right and crashes. Um, you know, very few people travel from A to B in that rightmost lane. And most of our crashes are happening in that rightmost lane. So what we have done is looking, looking at what you currently own and taking that third lane, that curb lane, and repurposing it into those connected sidewalks and putting a buffer area in there. Um, and so that way we're not having to buy land and buy buildings, which would be tens of millions of, you know, of dollars um, and kind of reusing what we have today out there. Um, the, the, the second thing of this is folks walk and drive where they feel safe. And when you have a crash happening every other day, if you are a pedestrian and you're witnessing one of these crashes, that's incredibly unsettling. We want folks to feel comfortable on Colfax because it is a road where we can put street lights. You know, we want our motorists to be driving up and down Colfax because it's an arterial. I don't want them on 13th or neighborhood streets. We need them on Colfax. So we want to bring folks back to Colfax um, from that standpoint. Um, a few cup, a few things that we've talked about. Um, you know, RTD has been a wonderful partner with this. Um, we're going to have bus pullouts. So while we will have a lane reduction, um, we will have a place to pull buses out of the flow of traffic to kind of prevent that friction. 
Um, we're putting in new protected crossings. So currently we have a traffic signal every quarter mile. Um, we're missing one at Depew. So we wanna add a new traffic signal there. But now in between every traffic signal, we wanna put in protected signals to cross. So that means, you know, if you wanna come up to Colfax and walk from one business to the next, you'll never be further than 300 or so feet away from a, a safe place to cross the street. Um, the other great thing about equally spaced traffic signals is we can progress traffic at lower speeds, which would be around 30, 33 miles per hour. That also makes the road safer for both motorists and pedestrians. The other wonderful benefit is air quality. Um, by having those equally spaced signals and by getting rid of a crash every other day, we eliminate that stop and go that, that produces so many emissions and waste fuel. So, um, you know, benefiting air quality, uh, the stormwater component, you know, the timing is perfect. We're, we're, you know, there's so much infrastructure and civil engineering components that must go into a project. So it's, it's much more than just putting in a curb, if you will, um, and, and uh, crosswalks. You know, we've got to build everything that goes both above ground and, and below ground. Um, and then the final point that I kind of made last week, we are at a wonderful advantage in this part of Lakewood because we have light rail. A lot of cities with these challenges don't have alternate transit, you know, opportunities really. Um, and we've got residents that have lived in this area for, for decades, long time loyal residents. And frankly, we need our road to grow with the folks that have, have lived around the area. Um, you know, the sidewalks have tripping hazards. And as we age, our eyesight declines. It's harder to, to, to perceive depth, for example, and we can't have folks tripping right up against traffic. So smoother connected sidewalks um, are a need not only to connect business to business, but our neighborhood door to business and our transit door to business and bringing all of that infrastructure together, you know, to make it all safe and, and work well for folks. So, so, uh, so yeah, I'll, I will stop there and then i pass it along over to Ann. Thanks again for having me. Um, I'm going to jump in real quick just for Ann's. Sorry, Ann. Um, one of the things that's really important to the project too is how it looks, how it, not only how it functions, how it looks, the design of the product to make it an, I think an elegant design. And because we are, this project is within the 40 West Arts District, um, public art is an integral part of the project. <clears throat> and that's really um, two of the elements, and Ann will talk about the process that we really want some public input on. Also on some of the safety, but some of the safety elements are to make it safer, obviously. But there are a lot of things that are open for discussion in terms of how the project looks, how public art can be integrated into the project, um, and how it functions. So I'll stop there and turn it over to Ann. Yeah, and sorry, I'll, I'll tag on to that. And the reason art can be a wonderful asset, a lot of these crashes are happening at night with pedestrians. They're not seen, they're wearing dark clothing. So someone mentioned murals earlier on, you know, in your conversation. Bright murals contrast dark pedestrians. So we can be incredibly innovative with art, making this project not only look wonderful, but actually make it a safer place to walk as well. So, so yeah, thank you uh, for throwing that out there, Roger. All right, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Ann Kuchenmeister, and I am uh, I work at Michael Baker, which is also located in Lakewood, and I get the opportunity to work with you all in Lakewood on engagement around this act, this project. So um, a couple um, introductions before I jump into how you can get involved. Um, JJ Folsom's on the phone today. He's with Progressive Urban Management Associates, which has the awesome acronym PUMA. And they're helping us connect with business and property owners on the district as kind of a liaison between the city and the bid. Um, so forming that connection there and providing support. Um, and then Bill and Vanessa Zarate, I know are gonna be connecting soon again on how we can kind of get our strategy together to connect to the, I think over 200 businesses is what Vanessa had told me before that are within this project area. So a lot of outreach will be done there. Um, we're also really excited to 
um, work with the arts district and with you all um, moving forward and just having these strong organizations in the area is so beneficial for helping to spread information, share what's going on and get more people involved. So we appreciate the opportunity to talk to you all and have your support, um, at least with sharing information on this project. So right now, what we've got going on um, is we have our digital um, kind of hub, if you will, at Lakewood Together set up. And that's really gonna be throughout this project where we um, can share information, find updates, have opportunities for input, please ask your questions. And so I'm just gonna take us there very quickly to look at, I might need to do a new share, I'm thinking, so that you guys can see this. Um, I just wanna take you on a quick tour then of this kind of digital hub and show you what's going on right now. We've already had over 1400 visitors to the site. So we know there's a lot of interest and we hope that if you haven't stopped in yet, that you will. If you need to get in touch with me, my contact information is right here. Um, we also have Christy from the city here and Vanessa is also listed. Um, so if you need to connect with us, please do our information's right there. Um, we have a lot of information on the project. So you need to click the read more to expand it. Um, it's truncated right now, so if you want all the details, um, they're listed below, um, including the funding, the safety data that Matt mentioned, the project components of the design that Matt also mentioned are listed here, and how we're working with partners in the project area. And then I really wanted to point out some of the initial ways that you guys can start giving us feedback on this. So we have um, three ways to provide feedback. Right now, the survey is open. We've already gotten a lot of responses on that, and we're looking to get a lot more. Um, we're going to use this to kind of flush out priorities and refine some of the ideas we have around how to invest in design dollars. So there's still a lot of decisions on the table around what amenities do you want to see? Um, what do you want them to look like? Where on the corridor do you want us to prioritize those amenities? Um, what should bus stops look like? How would you design the crosswalks? Are there certain pinch points that are really problematic we need to be aware of? So um, the survey has a lot of questions around those for drivers, for pedestrians, for transit users, for anyone in the area to talk about what their priorities are. And then this tab for places is going to allow you to show us um, your priority areas on the map. So we encourage you to put pins in um, around what excuse me, what you see as current pinch points and priorities. And then the last one is, if you have a question, um, you know, Bill had mentioned to me that he's heard some questions on the project that maybe aren't answered on this website. We're planning and putting together a um, frequently asked questions section that we're going to post here. So if there's things that we can do and answer um, and clarify, we'd love to hear your questions. Um, please send them in to us and then we'll, we'll be responsive to those as well. A um, few documents on the side, and this timeline will continue to be updated. So just a quick tour of this digital space. Um, last one, you know, we encourage you to keep coming back, checking for more information, and sign up for those details. So that's current. I'm going to switch back to the PowerPoint and quickly go over future things that are in the works. Um, we're putting together some social media posts and packages to really help get the word out that we'll be sharing. Um, and we'd encourage people to pass that along in your networks and just kind of expand our reach. Um, and then we're going to be passing out more information with the newsletter. Um, we're looking for in the future people to help us pass out flyers physically on the district. So we'll have some brief flyers um, and information there. Um, and then there's also going to be a text campaign. So people within the zip code of the project area will just get one text message. They'd have to opt in to get any future correspondence. Um, but if you get that, um, you can reply to it to get information sent to you and then forward it uh, to other friends in your network if you want to share that. Um, pretty soon we'll have a um, public meeting coming up and we'll share that information here as well as on that website that I showed you all. And then um, the second to last one here I'm really excited about because we get to partner with 40 West, um, hopefully with this group, but we're going to be putting out via 40 West a call for artists. We would like artistic interpretations of the vision of this project connected back to some of the project information that we're going to be putting in large scale print. So think of like up in window, vacant window storefronts where we really want to share this information connected to the community, um, but with some artistic spin on it. So we're excited to work with some of the artists in the area and in the district on that. 
Um, and then the last one I pinged earlier, but we're going to be doing some um, more detailed outreach to area business and property owners so that they can start to share their priorities and their vision and their concerns and their challenges that they might have. We won't have the details of exactly what's happening in front of a business or property at this point, because as um, was mentioned, the design is still forming. So really we're trying to get ahead of that and ask for people's input prior so that we can then pull that into the details of design when we're there. So um, those are just a snapshot of what's coming in the future. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm going to be tracking that website today. So start pushing it out, visit it. We'll see how much of a spike we can get and then be on the lookout for that text. And yeah, excited for the opportunity. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Ann, Matt, and Roger. And I know that uh, between Bill and Katie uh, in the chat box, you've got the link to the website that uh, Ann was just going over and a, a direct link to the uh, survey as well. So encourage you all to, to, to go there. I, I like the idea of putting the pins on the, on the map too. So it's a great visual. So, uh, and uh, what a great opportunity to bring the arts that, you know, kind of we're trying to promote together with uh, safety and just Matt, what you said about murals, you know, can help decrease uh, crashes uh, using the correct term, as I, I see in the chat. Um, <laughs> it's all good, all, all good things coming together. So thank you for that information. Um, speaking of good things, uh, we're going to move to the, the next item on our program agenda. And we have Katie Ziegler here that's going to uh, talk about the rollout of our passport program. Hi everyone, thanks Ron. How are we doing? Good, I saw some waving hands and some head nods, it's awesome. I'm really excited to be here today to talk to you once again about Passport West Colfax. Uh, myself and Morgan Cameron, who is part of the team, uh, have worked for a month now on getting businesses along the West Colfax corridor signed up as official destinations for this really exciting new program. And I'm coming to you today to say, get ready because it's about to be your turn to participate. So let me share with you the website that you should have seen in our newsletter, but I understand that maybe your newsletter didn't come to you. So we'll talk about it now. All right. So this is the official Passport West Colfax landing page, the collect and win campaign to support local businesses. Get ready to get started. There are four asks. The first ask is you can, starting now, download your passport. When you download your passport, it'll be a PDF print to put your stickers on so that you can take a photo and submit it to us once you start collecting. Then see the destinations. This is the thing you're all excited about. You've all been waiting for. We have 15 restaurants signed up to participate, including Cafe Del Sol, uh, Davies Chuck Wagon, the Lakewood Grill, Mint and Sarah, lots and lots of fan favorites, and as well as Yabby Hut, which is new. So please get out there, start shopping April 1st. You'll be able to collect these stickers and put them on your passport and just share in all of the excitement. Um, once you start doing that, you can cast your vote. Remember by voting, you get one, entered into a raffle to win gift cards from these restaurants. And two, you can vote for your favorite business to be entered into additional raffle entries to win a $500 MICO grant. So you get something, they get something. It's about supporting each other, coming together, celebrating what we already have on West Colfax and all of our wonderful eateries. So again, go download your passport. You will receive more emails from me. You will see, receive more social media posts from me. It starts April 1st. It ends April 30th. You have 30 days, 15 restaurants. That's kind of it. I know that's fast, but I wanted to keep it short because I'm so excited and I know a lot of you just want to go look at the website. So any, are there any questions? Are you ready to play April 1st? Put it in your calendars. You'll get an email. Thank you. All right. Well, with that, I will call it. I know that's really short, but we're just excited to get started. Katie and Morgan, thank you for the, the effort you put into this. I know you've been just really at it to, to get the restaurants signed up and, and uh, informed on kind of, you know, what it's all about. And I would really encourage all the people that are listening this morning to spread the word. You know, uh, if you need information or, you know, it's a great way for us to expand kind of the, uh, 
uh, the, the, the scope of what WCCA is doing in our community too. So um, what a great thing. And, and so it starts on April 1st. And so download your passport, pass it on to others and let's have some fun with it. Uh, it's a great, great thing as we're coming, kind of accelerating out of COVID and, and coming into spring and yeah, get out and about. So uh, cool. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, next on our program, we have uh, Alexis Moore here today, and she's going to talk about uh, a survey uh, that CU Denver has done on the art line. Um, and I, I'm really looking forward to, to seeing what you have for us, Alexis. Thanks. Thanks so much, Ron. Um, can you guys all hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I'm on the headphones, so you don't have to hear my screaming children and crazy dog in the background. So glad this is working. Um, good morning, everybody. It's great to be here. I think most of you know me. I'm Alexis Moore. I'm a principal planner with the city of Lakewood. Um, and, and excited to be here this morning to share, as Ron said, um, a great project. Um, I think the theme of today is surveys and asking for all of your input because it's extremely important. Um, many of you have heard me over the years be here speaking about the 40 West Art Line project. Um, if you're not familiar with that project, it is um, Lakewood's four mile walking and biking arts experience that was funded through a major grant from the National Endowment for the Arts and launched in June of 2018. And I know a lot of you participated in surveys and planning efforts, um, walk and bike rides with Mayor Paul and other events to help us shape the in initial art line experience. Um, and we're really excited that um, this past fall, uh, we had the opportunity to submit an application to the CU Denver's um, Masters in Urban and Regional Planning program to work with graduate students there on their kind of final semester project, their capstone project to really have a real world uh, client-based need and project that they could dive into and help us with. Um, so the project that we proposed was to help us with a GIS mapping database to really kind of have students walk the art line, experience the art line, help us identify where all the sidewalks are, where they aren't, where uh, they might need some love, where we have lighting, um, where we have art and placemaking elements such as benches and banners and trash bins. So it's a really robust effort to dive into the mapping for the art line, which is gonna be amazingly helpful for us going forward, um, as well as to create a community survey to ask for your experience uh, feedback. And so I'm excited to introduce today um, the two graduate students we're working with are phenomenal. They've spent hours and hours um, out there already and really familiar with the community. Um, Sarah Grassi, and I hope I'm getting your last names right. I realized I, I haven't actually said them before. I've just been reading them on emails. Um, and Nikisha Mystery are here to uh, share a little bit about the survey and I will share my screen, hopefully if it works, um, just for some reference materials. And I'll turn it over to you, Sarah. Great, thanks, Alexis. And hello, everyone. It's so great to be here this morning. The 40 West Art Line is truly a unique experience that really caught our interest as we were selecting our capstone project. And Nikisha and I are just so excited to be working with the city of Lakewood on this effort. Thus far, this project has been really helpful to us as we learn how to work as professional planners and how community engagement specifically is so critical in the planning process. And as Alexis mentioned, we have recently developed and sent out a 10 minute survey about the 40 West Art Line, which you may have already seen pop up in your mailbox. Our goal here is to gather community input about people's experiences on the art line and just how it can continue to be enhanced as a local amenity. As of yesterday morning, I believe, we already have received 100 survey responses, so we do want to say a big thank you to everyone on the call that has already participated because this information will be crucial to helping us as we collect data and determine how the city can improve the art line in the future. We have gotten some really excellent feedback already, particularly many positive comments about how people really enjoy the immersive and interactive art and how the art line is already quickly becoming a destination for visitors to the Denver metro area, which is just really great. Um, as I mentioned, your feedback is very important to shaping the next steps of this project. However, we do want to note that the city does not have the funding to make improvements immediately. But with this project, we hope to prepare the city of Lakewood and the 40 West Arts District for when it does become available. 
The survey will close on April 5th, so please get your responses in as soon as you can. And know that if you do answer the survey, you will be entered to win, um, or you'll be entered into a raffle to win a gift card to one of two Artline businesses. And I also want to mention that we are available for questions and you will find our contact information right here on this slide. So please feel free to reach out with any questions you might have. And finally, we want you to be aware that when this project is wrapped up in mid-May, all recommendations will be compiled into a report and Alexis can share that information and data with you at that time for really anyone who's interested. Um, that's really all I have for you today. So thank you so much everyone for your time. Thanks so much, guys. Um, let me just stop sharing. And as Sarah mentioned, feel free to reach out any questions you may have. The report will be ready later this spring and happy to share any feedback or come back and um, present that with you. So thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Alexis. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Nakisha. And uh, we've got the, the survey information in the chat box. So uh, this is a survey rich uh, meeting today. So. Uh, be sure to fill those out. This one has a short timeline on it. So um, it, it'd be good for you to kind of get at it and give them some feedback. It's it's cool. It's kind of cool how this all kind of ties together with the, the, the rest of the, <laughs> the things that are happening on West Colfax. Um, and it, it, taking a, a maybe a, a longer vision on what's happening on West Colfax, uh, the next item on our agenda is to go to uh, Kevin uh, Yoshida and, and Bill Marino uh, and get an update on our uh, a vision project. Thanks so much, Ron. I appreciate it. Uh, thanks, everybody. Um, yeah, we've been uh, uh, teasing and, and kind of keeping this group, WCCA, up to speed on the progress of the VIG, and we are uh, nearing the end of uh, uh, this project as well. So um, I'll uh, uh, also, just mentioned up here up front, you'll see it in the uh, deck as, a, as well. Um, all of our history and our meetings and um, uh, the resources we've been sharing are on uh, uh, bid.westcolfax, uh, up at the top of the browser there, um, uh, uh, .org um, slash 2040. So feel free to pop in there anytime. If uh, I say something too fast or miss something and you want to uh, go back and look, feel free for that uh, to do that. Um, yeah, Bill, if you could stop there at the core purpose, just a reminder, uh, uh, the Lakewood West Colfax Business Improvement District uh, st uh, started this reboot project uh, after we um, uh, endorsed this 2040 plan and uh, we had a very specific idea about uh, re-engaging with the community and uh, getting input, uh, uh, checking in on our priority priorities and reestablishing those, um, all with the goal of uh, uh, mobilizing resources. And uh, as I mentioned, um, uh, we are uh, reporting is a big part of that. So memorializing these conversations as well as uh, 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 amending the plan um, with a couple of new chapters and new sec sections that I'll sh show you was important. Um, and we have some recommendations here, there at the end. So quick overview of, of uh, our area, just as a reminder for everybody from um, Welch, uh, on the west side there to Sheridan and about five blocks north and south, 20th and 15th is our uh, general focus area for the corridor. Um, and give me the next slide there. We One of the foundational um, uh, concepts that I think everybody intuitively uh, kinds of understands as we use Colfax, as we've talked about in several different lenses today, are those notions of, of nodes. You know, one in, at the, the uh, 40 West and its uh, gallery and art resources um, at, the, at the other end, Westland, which we've, we've also talked about, and, and uh, you can also see how those three nodes are also um, very much backed up by the, the transit notion. So um, intuitively, areas of activity, areas um, where we, we naturally uh, think about resources are, are definitely the, the spine and backbone of, of uh, how we've been looking at uh, the corridor. Uh, here's our calendar. So we've been uh, hard at work since uh, August, uh, meeting regularly every month, uh, doing a deep digest on that 2040 plan. Give it a look if you haven't had a chance to lately. Uh, there's six chapters uh, with uh, action items and goals uh, that the group did a deep dive on and, and rated and came up with uh, priority ratings as a result of that. Really important information. Um, and as we turned the clock into 2021, uh, we were uh, 
integrating um, all that feedback, also looking at how to make sure that this document is uh, always active, always relevant. Um, the group definitely digested all the things that, that we've been talking about here at this meeting as well. Uh, the the uh, uh, West Side development and, and Westland and some of the other opportunities out there, um, as well as uh, convenience store discussions. Um, we were we were able to synthesize real time discussions as well as uh, figure out how they uh, create an infrastructure within the 2040 plan that's actionable and useful as a resource for for everybody. Um, so we're reporting to you here in, in March and, and we'll um, uh, button up uh, the plan in its uh, official form in the next few months here. Um, big thanks and big shout out to everybody who spent their time and brain power and offered that um, up uh, during this this process. It's It's been a, a long journey, but a, a fruitful one. So we've got over uh, 30 names here. If you, if you get a chance, we, we all encounter each other in many different forms. Uh, give them a shout out on, on our behalf and definitely accept uh, uh, the, the bid board, uh, uh, our appreciation for all your efforts here. Uh, we've got three important um, uh, uh, topic areas that we're going to be uh, looking at uh, updating the 2040 plan to. So we've got some new content. Uh, we've got a uh, uh, some new structural elements we're going to add in here, and and most importantly, again, all this process uh, that we've got uh, gone through is an important community outreach component that we're going to uh, fold right into the plan. So, uh, in, off to the side there, you can see definitely our uh, we're always uh, looking to improve. So, improving the clarity and 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 emphasizing areas that that we think are important bubbled up in this. Um, where we're going to uh, reinforce the spine of that document and in always increasing uh, usability so that this is always, as Bill said, we hold this regularly up in our interactions with uh, existing and new partners in the corridor, hold up the 2040 plan. So we want to make sure that's also a resource for everybody else. Uh, here's just a quick snapshot uh, for, the, for, for those of you who, who uh, weren't part of the entire process. Uh, the goals and action items that bubbled up and that you'll find in the plan. And, and I mentioned again, so this this uh, list will look familiar because I think WCCA has done a great job of being engaged in uh, all these conversations, but everything from high level uh, art, art and aesthetics and, and authenticity to how that works with green space to how that works with actual um, properties that are of concern uh, uh, for, the, for the corridor community um, from Westland to uh, uh, other uh, potentials like like uh, RTD um, and you know that kind of rolls up into this notion of um, uh, one of the foundational principles we find that you'll see repeated in the next several slide here is that I really appreciate how everybody has taken their own um, um, concerns and specific focus areas and then broaden that into a, a 360 view of the corridor not only literally but in terms of uh, how all these different items work in the in the ecosystem of creating this uh, this spine that, that we so appreciate and want to see improved. Uh, Bill, give me the next slide there. Um, I won't read these word for word. Uh, again, uh, uh, download it. But these guiding principles were uh, really an important addition that 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 we found in the process. We were talking about it regularly during our ambassadors meetings, um, but bubbling them up, and we're going to add this uh, structurally into the document. So this notion about a 360 perspective, again, philosophically, as well as literally. Um, uh, th this process in principle two there has been uh, super meaningful and, and part of our recommendations um, is actually that this five year look back and look forward evaluation of the path past and uh, realigning priorities has been really important. So we're gonna adopt that as a principle. Um, and then the, the third point, which is um, I'm starting to see uh, live even more and more every day in my individual interactions uh, with everybody involved in the corridor is that we're synthesizing these conversations and that um, our, our local voices, our, our voices as citizens and uh, neighborhood organizations and business and property owners are uh, syncing up with our uh, 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 city staff as well as elected officials. So um, uh, giving that the strength and power in a principle we, we really thought was important and thanks uh, to everybody who's actually actually living that uh, every day and and uh, uh, taking that to heart. Um, again, our, our focus area is just a little more granular. You can see again how important that uh, 360 view and note of activities are uh, in our in our look back um, and advice forward. 
uh, land use policy and, and discussions were definitely an important underlying string um, in, in what we the ambassadors have, have discovered and, and developing uh, resources and tools for communicating with uh, not only uh, existing and new property owners, but um, uh, 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 as well as our electeds. Uh, Bill, maybe if you could go back to the deck for me there, if you get a chance. Um, our, uh, for our ambassadors, you'll, you'll get an email uh, coming out, but check in on that website as well for our uh, upcoming uh, meeting tomorrow at uh, 11.45 to noon, uh, where we'll reveal a little bit more refined uh, writing for, for you there. Uh, Bill, can you get back to the deck for me there? There we go. Cool, thanks. Um, almost uh, done here. Scroll through a little bit for me there. Um, yeah, check out that landing page. Again, if you're an ambassador, uh, uh, check in on the, the Zoom link for tomorrow is uh, posted on there. Um, some other uh, notions that definitely were, were coming out in that process. Um, historical preservation. Uh, 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 we've, we've talked about it here in this group and we know uh, uh, we were all champions of, 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 of that DNA and the signage and the cool things that make our quarter unique um, that that you'll all all find in our uh, updated plan as well. Give me a scroll there, Bill. Oh, is that the last? Oh, that is the last slide there. So uh, uh, sorry. Uh, um, uh, yeah, so uh, look for, we're synthesizing this real time, as you can tell, uh, the writing uh, for, for our internal group, uh, we've refined to the next level for, um, for our meeting tomorrow. Um, uh, we've got a new introduction, we've got uh, a little more refined writing on goals and action items, and uh, this will be a, a living plan and discussions are uh, moving forward, and I'm, I'm really glad to hear um, that uh, our ambassadors are using this in our the day-to-day -day in, in interactions and uh, uh, real-time conversations they're having for everybody. So uh, definitely check out that web page and you'll see a new uh, a synthesized um, uh, 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 PDF of the 2040 plan that you can download in the near future here. So I'll turn it back to you, Ron. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin and Bill, for your leadership on this as we're closing in on getting the, the final product put together. So thank you for that. And again, for the ambassadors tomorrow at 1145 to about 115. Uh, so, yep. Uh, thank you so much for that. And uh, we have uh, a member of our board, uh, Todd Lansing, who has volunteered to give us our tip of the month. So uh, Todd, uh, take it away. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for, uh, the opportunity to share with you today. I'm going to uh, share my screen. Hopefully everything is working there. Can you see a spreadsheet on the screen? Yes. Excellent. <clears throat> well, last month, Katie shared uh, the idea of reviewing your strategic objectives every quarter. And I immediately thought about the idea of a tool that I've used in my business. And for those of you who need to track your personal productivity or your business activity, regardless of what it is. Um, I, I call this spreadsheet a periodization spreadsheet where I divide each quarter into 13 weeks uh, because 52 divided by four is 13. Um, and the idea is to try to accomplish your goals uh, after the 12th week. And the, the 13th week is intended to take uh, that week off. Uh, this is included on the agenda, but I just wanted to kind of walk you through what a sample week might look like. Uh, and this is available for you guys to download if you want to. And I put a video on YouTube uh, if you want review. Uh, but just as an example, uh, at the top here, you could put whatever your quarterly objectives are. I just kind of generically called it 12 week year to kind of treat each fiscal quarter as a mini fiscal year. And then just document whatever your goals are that you're trying to accomplish for the quarter. Um, and, and for me, it was quarterly revenue, increase my client base by a certain percentage each quarter. In my business, I'm in financial services like Josh Colkett is. Uh, uh, and so um, you would have your goals based on your uh, intent. 
Uh, and you'll see how this works. There's some weekly tasks that are repetitive that it's important for me to complete on a weekly basis. And then I have a bunch of blank space where I can add to the lines. Uh, so the first thing I should do each week is I should plan my week. And I just simply give myself a one if I've accomplished that objective. And it turns green. Isn't that cool? Uh, and for me, one COI stands for center of influence. And because I'm surrounded by a lot of great people like Bill Marino and Mayor Paul and Ron Senor, that's easy for me to do. So I'll do a one there. Um, and then when it comes to calling people that I want to do business with, sometimes I don't do so well. So let's say I got 50% of that done. It's a yellow. I need to talk to my clients on a regular basis. Maybe I talk to three quarters of that list and I get a 75%. Uh, calling some COIs, maybe I did uh, a third of that. Schedule six meetings, maybe I did get that done. But the thing I want you to notice is up here, this percentage, uh, how that changes. So I'm going to take that off and it was red. And then when I get into the yellow area, I'm closer to accomplishing the, the weekly activities that will help me accomplish my quarterly objectives, if that makes sense. Um, and if I give myself another one, I jump into the green area. And the spreadsheet we have made available for you turns green at 70%. Um, and if you think about failing 30% uh, of the time, um, that's not a big deal if you're having success 70 plus percent of the time. If you want to add more line items to the task list, right now I have seven light items and you can see it right there. But if I add one, add another one, add a third, add a fourth, it just adds to the number of line items. So I have more things I need to try to get done. And let's say I got um, most of those things done. Uh, and you know, if you don't get it done, you leave it as zero. This area is just for notes, um, and you can modify this however you want to. It's just a spreadsheet you can download. But if you keep track of your weekly progress and you look back over the weeks to see if you're in the green, that's really all you got to do. If you're in the green, you have your, your, your main strategic goals in front of you all the time up here. You have your quarterly objectives set right here. And then when you're done with this, keep this as a copy. You can copy it to your computer system uh, for the next fiscal quarter and the next fiscal quarter. Um, but with Kevin sharing the goals of the 40, 2040 vision plan and with Katie sharing about strategic um, uh, goals that you should review each quarter, it's really important to document your goals for your quarter and the year and then to document your weekly activity. And I call this revenue producing activity, but it could be anything else. And then if you really want to improve something, measure it keep track of it or keep stats of what you're trying to accomplish. Um, and, and if you're not accomplishing your goals, if you're not getting into the green area, change what needs to be listed here. So you're focusing on something different and you don't have to be the person who does it all. You can delegate it to somebody else in this who area. Just keep track of who you delegated that to. Uh, so that's it. If you guys would like to talk about it, I'm happy to share with you. Maybe it'll help you be successful in your endeavors. Um, and Katie can help share my contact information so we can, we can yak about that later. But that's the tip. Hopefully it's helpful. I'm concerned my wife might see that and start creating my <laughs> goals. <laughs> it looks looks very practical. Uh, great input. So, and we're going to try to get the uh, Katie's been driving our, our uh, monthly tips, and we're going to try to kind of share the wealth of things that our, our board members know. So, so look for more of this as we roll forward in future months. But thank you for kicking that off, Todd. Um, we have about 15 minutes left, and we're going to run through our community updates. Uh, and I will just go down through the list. And uh, do we have uh, someone here from the Action Center today? Yes, good morning, Ron. Tawny Eisenbrown here from the Action mm -hmm. Center. 
Um, we have lots of great things going on. Of course, the need is still high in the community. So please consider organizing a food or hygiene drive. Um, coming up in April, we're actually gonna be hosting kind of a community-wide April showers drive um, to collect some of those hygiene items. So if you are interested in that, please reach out to me at communications at theactioncenter.org and I'll get you moving on that. Um, other than that, we just kind of continue moving along. We did open a separate clothing bank uh, about a month ago now um, at 1565 Wadsworth, which is just across the street from um, Walmart there. Um, uh, over in that open vacant space by Patia Tai. That's been going really well. So we are taking clothing donations and we are now accepting all seasonal donations. The only thing that we ask is that when those donations come to the Action Center is that they are clean and washed and free of rips, stains and tears. So that way we can get them out to the community. Um, also mark your calendars for May 21st. We'll be hosting our premier fundraising event, uh, the Where Action Matters event. So we'll have more details coming on that. And that's about it for the Action Center today. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> thank you for being with us. Uh, Lakewood Arts. Two Creeks neighborhood. Uh, Two Creeks is having our regular monthly meeting on this Saturday at 8.30 in the morning via Zoom. And after today's meeting, I'm adding a few things to the calendar. So thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Kathy. Uh, uh, we also got a newsletter out recently. So um, if anybody wants a newsletter, Kathy will probably send it to you. <laughs> okay. Thank you both. Uh, anyone from the Iber neighborhood today? Yes, uh, Josh here from Iber, and I'll hit uh, West Colfax Kiwanis as well. We are uh, meeting according to our regular meeting and uh, may have an annual meeting uh, this summer yet is uh, it looks good on that on that front. Uh, also still looking for folks uh, who would like to participate in West Colfax Kiwanis as we have a lot of events uh, coming up this summer as well. We're hoping hopeful as we uh, reopen and uh, as folks get the vaccine uh, that we can um, uh, get uh, a semblance of normality back to our fundraising efforts uh, to help uh, kids along the West Colfax corridor. Josh, maybe you've already done this, but if not, get the Kiwanis uh, contact info to Katie and we'll we'll make sure it's up. Uh, she, she's got it covered. I can see that already. Doesn't surprise me. Um, Morse Park neighborhood. I could probably update on Morse Park if there's not a representative here. They have a lot of cool stuff going on. So first, they have an electronic and metal recycling event at the Clements Community Center scheduled for April 24th. So probably a good time to get those old laptop screens, phones, cords that are out of date. Uh, and then they also have announced a garden in a box event where you can um, conserve water in your landscaping efforts for March 23rd. So I would definitely check out Sustainable Morse Park on Facebook where they post all of their current sustainable events. Thank you. Uh, Applewood neighborhood? Yes, Ron, this is Dave Ruckman. Um, several of us from the board have been working with uh, a leader from Daniels Welchester and folks from the Miller Heights neighborhood about the Westland Town Center. Uh, there was an action issue in front of the council on Monday and they took uh, an action which we were against. Uh, there's a very strange contract going back to 1992 where the city had pledged by contract to sell 21 acres of the Westland Town Center parking lot for a million dollars. And that 28 or 29 year old contract was effectively executed on Monday night by the council. We were opposed to it because we thought that if the city simply slowed this down, it might send a signal to the developer to sit down with the neighborhoods to talk about his plans and to hear some of our vision and to more closely coordinate with um, Kevin and Bill and all of our communities 2040 vision plan. Council looked at it a little differently. I think the city now has uh, less leverage in this process to kind of nudge on the developer 
to be responsive. Um, a senior city official urged us to reach out to the developer we did. And when asked, the developer said he had no plans for Westland other than perhaps to bring in more tenants like a Dollar General. So I don't know where we're at at this point, but we're watching it very carefully. Thanks, Ron. Okay, thank you, Dave. Thank you for that input. Uh, is uh, Daniels Welchester, is there anything separate there? Anyone, I know you mentioned that you've been kind of dialoguing with them as part of this effort, but I just wanted to make sure there wasn't any separate updates from that community. Yes, well, I'm Daniels Welchester. And I did want to give a shout out to the city works. Sometimes um, people don't uh, realize how hard they, they work when there's a big snow uh, fall like we had. And I can't complain. We have an essential worker in our household. She was able to get to work. So I really want to thank the, the people out there driving those, those snow plows in that inclement weather. And so thank you to the city. I chuckle because they do do a good job, but they, they came by our house right after my wife and I had finished the sidewalk. And uh, so we got to do it twice, but uh, I got the street clean, cleaned off. Um, in any event, uh, next is uh, North Lakewood Advocates. Okay, uh, we have Jerry Hilton here from uh, Lakewood Elks. I know he's got a couple things. Yeah. Hello everyone and happy St. Patrick's Day. Uh, we do have uh, corned beef and cabbage today for $13 and we're gonna have music and we dry our own corned beef. So we make it from scratch and it's delicious if anybody's interested. Also, we're now open on Tuesdays, Thursdays and Fridays. Tuesday's bar bingo, Thursday is ballroom swing dancing and Friday is country dancing. So we're slowly opening up so that we can have our facilities available for the members and guests. Thank you. So yeah, live music on Thursdays and Fridays. Uh, and what time is the, is the Elks open for the corned beef and cabbage, if you know? Noon. Noon, okay. And I know Bill, Bill Gashler, who's uh, been involved in the community. I, I don't know if he's cooking it this year, but it's been awesome in the past in terms of- Yes, it has. Yeah, <laughs> so thank you for that. Thank you for that update. Uh, West Metro Chamber of Commerce. Yeah, hi guys, good morning. This is Madison with the Chamber. Um, I wanna talk about two things. We have Celebrate Jeff Co. The tickets close today. So if you haven't gotten your ticket, they're only $20 to be a part of this celebration. And I wanna read through our nominees because I'm sure you guys will recognize some of these names. So for our champion award, our finalists were Mitt and Sarah Coffee, Ladon Sperling and Paulette Fearley, who's with Resident Realty, uh, Colorado Credit Union, Flights Wine Cafe in Arvada, Office Evolution in Lakewood, and First Bank, Jeffco Public Schools, St. Anthony Hospital on Union. Uh, nonprofits that were nominated for the Collaborator Award was Community First Foundation, Lakewood Connects, the Action Center, Jeffco Schools Foundation. And then the Catalyst Award, which is for an individual or a business uh, that has transformed negative situations into positive solutions. The nominees were Premier Events by Melissa Eastup. Amira Waters, who we all know from BRC, now the Interim Executive Director for Spay Today, and Snapology of Golden Littleton. The Challenger Award, which is our min minority and or women-owned business, was Mint and Sarah Coffee again, African Grill and Bar in Lakewood, and MA Acupuncture in Belmar. And then lastly, our Community Award nominees were Balmer Peak Distillery, Jefferson County Workforce and or yeah, Workforce Task force and Grammys, goodies and Wheat Ridge. So congrats to all of our finalists. We'll be announcing our winners this Friday for Celebrate Jeffco. I'm gonna send that link. You guys haven't looked and you can look at the list of all of our nominees. Congrats to everyone. Um, and then also we have women in business coming up. And as always, I like to give West Colfax a little uh, discount code for those who are not members. Um, I'm going to put my email in the chat as well as the registration. If you're interested in joining and you're not a member just yet, I can get you a member pricing with a promo code. Um, it is about transforming worry and taming the anxious mind. And it is going to be a great topic. We have a speaker from Jefferson Center, and that is coming up next Tuesday on the 23rd. And I'll send my email in the chat if you have any questions. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Rocky Mountain College of Art and Design. And we got the uh, the the uh, update for West Colfax Kiwanis. I saw in the chat that uh, Lakewood Arts is open Wednesday through Sunday, so there was a little bit of an update there. Uh, are there any other community associations that I haven't called out that would like to uh, mention anything that's in the works? Okay, I'm also going to ask if we have any new members with us today that would like to just uh, introduce themselves. You don't, you're not obligated to do so, but if you've joined us for the first time, we'd we'd love to have you just say hey and uh, introduce yourself. Okay. Well, hearing none. Uh, I'm just so excited when I get through these meetings because it's just happy stuff, art and it coming together and the long-term vision with what's happening <laughs> to improve safety and art. And, and uh, I preach everyone making the time for this today. I'm gonna, as I've said the last couple of meetings, invite somebody to uh, come with you next month to virtually uh, attend a meeting. We're trying to grow our membership and grow the awareness of, of WCCA. So point them to the website, uh, have them get in touch with any of the board members or, or Katie. Uh, but but I think more importantly, you know, to try to tease them into coming coming along next. Uh, I think uh, April twenty first, third Wednesday of April, uh, and join us then. And otherwise, uh, stay safe and uh, enjoy St. Patrick's Day. And uh, we will see you next month, if not uh, in between. Thank you all. <laughs>